Okay, what's up everybody? Let me turn the music down a little bit. Let me know how that is. Audio wise on the music. Okay, what's up everybody? Okay. Alrighty. What's up, Danny? What's up, Ray? Paul? Chris Murphy? Um, how you guys all doing? So yeah, this is um, something that I was working on a while ago, uh, but I wanted to finish it up. I didn't ever get a chance to finish it, so I wanted to put the final touches on it. Maybe get um, out of Dynamesh and into subdivisions and start putting some some high frequency detail and some noise on there as well as do the final poly paint see if I can get a nice render of it um, it's pretty close to done Fen Reaper what's up Danny ZBrush how you doing uh, draw forever welcome hello Jericho tape hello Camille what's up and yeah it's kinda like uh, it's from the there's this uh, there's this old thing back from the good old ladies uh, they were called mad balls and here's the dude I'm working on here, um, but yeah, like there's like they're kind of like Cabbage Patch Kids in terms of like their design, but it's uh they had a bunch of different you know they're like toys as well as kind of cartoon characters. I think they did a movie. They did do a movie as well, which is actually pretty cool. But I always love like their designs. Like there's all these like bizarre kind of gross out there concepts. I think there's one like just like a fist grabbing a head. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to do like a few of these. I thought just the, I thought there were so many cool designs in in the catalog here. Um, so I was doing the one that I was uh, most familiar with, which is this guy Hornhead. Um, it's not my design, of course. This is uh, something made popular when I was a kid. Um, but you don't see these a lot. You don't see these around all that often. So I wanted to, uh, you know, sort of get back into it. Oh, what, what am I? Yeah, basically I'm still in Dynamesh. The resolution's pretty low, um, about a half million points. But I um Oh yeah, a day of the dead style one would be cool. I could just do like super vibrant. Yeah, there's a lot of really great imagery here as well. And yeah, if you look at like my past streams, I've been doing a little bit more. Um, I tend to do more realistic, kind of exaggerated realistic stuff. Um, I've been trying to work on getting more stylized stuff. I want to get better at doing more kind of cartoony, different types of exaggerated and sort of deliberately unrealistic sculpts. One of the biggest problems with these things is just like always trying to find all the edges and make it totally round. This is a little uh, clay tube special brush. is just a little. It's it's light clay tubes, but it's got a softer fall off, and it's also um, it's got a softer fall off, and it's uh, a lot lighter. So like the 
the tracks on the alpha aren't as pronounced and it's also pretty light so like I basically you'll see me like I can be a little bit more aggressive with it just because it's I know it's like a slow build up and it helps me kind of just get a little bit more fine tuned with it if I really want to dig in I can make it heavy but it's good for just like my default breaststroke and keeping it pretty tame yeah stylize is tough man like I've always been realistic my whole kind of since I started learning and practicing and like trying to like you know achieve what I was the look I was going for um, it was always unrealistic stuff and uh, I got to the point where I'm pretty decent at it you know but you know being able to not break those rules is the next challenge and I want to get a lot better at it um, and you have people the other way like they can do stylized really well um, but their realistic stuff tends to suffer it's strange because you I've always been taught at least in, in traditional 2d art it's like you can't do you can't do exaggeration until you understand the rules and the basics um, how true that is or not, I don't know, but that's something I've always been told. What's up, Noah? Just gave me a tweet, eh? Oh yeah, no, I, I responded, Noah. He should have uh, got my response already. Speaking of which... So yeah, some of you who are around in the 80s and 90s will uh, remember remember these little guys. I thought they were the coolest thing, and apparently they're doing like a they're having a little bit of comeback, like everything else from our childhood. Someone's uh, revitalizing it. So this is the regular clay tubes. As you can see, it's like it's a lot more pronounced. And you'll if I do a long stroke, you can kind of see those track marks are kind of in there, um, which is good when you're just like blocking in shapes. I like it. Um, I like how heavy handed it can be. Um, I mean, you know, it's precisely what kind of shape you're after. Just give it like a light dusting. Yeah, my UI is pretty nuts actually. If I move this out of the way, you can kind of see how I got the full thing going. Um, you know, maybe it's best if I just put my head up there and use that real estate all that often. Dougie, what's happening? Welcome. I still got to figure out how to do the uh, how to make the chat window. Um, There's a way to make it transparent. I just haven't dug into it yet. You gotta go into the HTML of the thing. I keep forgetting to do that before the stream. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna... So these are actually the stitches. There's a lot of stitch brushes out there you can get for free, but in reality, I think I just went up and got a... Uh, an IMM primitive. There's a half circle one in here somewhere. IMM basic. There you go. There's a little ring. No, it's not facing the right way. Yeah, head case. I can. It's it's exactly where I want things to be. Actually, the UI is uh, 
it took me a while. Oops, what have I done? Move that off. The UI actually took me a while to get to the point, but like, you know, over here is all my kind of sub tool stuff where it's just like splitting things and Z remeshing, dyna meshing, um, splitting things off, grouping, merging, closing hole. These are all like my and deformers. Like over here is like, I'm going to do something to this like sub tool right now. Down here is all brushes and like, you know, different sort of fixed cameras and stuff like that. Um, custom ones, a good one. Um, and then on the left here, it's just um, stroke, brush settings, lazy mouse, etc., curve stuff, framing the mesh, and then finally materials. And, and then at the top, you know, it's just sort of like status things, things you'd find on the space bar. Um, you know, and then a few rendering bits over here. The, the top's kind of miscellaneous tools, to be honest. But yeah, I mean, like, you know, for me, I'm just not a fan of having to dig into anything here. And and the big thing for me is that these sub menus up here are probably the biggest thing is that I have. It's just like anything that I use semi regularly, I threw it on a hotkey. So here's my crease and polygroup settings is on C. On D is all my deformation. On S is all my sub tool sub tool stuff. On G is all my geometry stuff. Um, I think that's it. A is alphas. I think that's it. But yeah, I mean, as you can see, it's just like it, that kind of thing. It's I, I just don't like digging into these menus. And so over the course of ZBrush R7, R8, I just basically started um, getting really serious about, about that specifically. Just getting the UI where I can be quick as possible. And then it's like, I need to do a quick inflation deformer. And, and then it's like, got really good at least just like moving quickly through my stub menus and stuff. So it works out. How do you delete a custom menu or a custom sub menu? Ugh, I forget. Um, I think enable customize. I think it had something to do with like this top thing. I think the way to do it is manual. Meaning, I think if you want to delete one of these, you'd have to pull all of these out one at a time. And then once it's at zero, I think that's... The, oh, wait, here we go. Clear that that's what it is. To delete a custom menu, um, you have to Control-Alt-Click the title of the menu, and then clear it. And boom, TGO is now gone. Forgot about that. All right, so there's there's that. All right, let's get back to where I was here. Turn that texture off. Back to my cap gray. Yeah, hey, I mean, like, you know, head case, it's definitely one where it takes some getting used to for sure. But I did throw it on my Gumroad, so people have been downloading it. Um, I'm not sure how useful they found it. It is one of those things where it's kind of just until you work with it long enough. I don't know how helpful it could possibly be. All right, let's get back to this. I need a half Taurus, basically. thought I had one down here, but I guess not. Sworn I had a brush that had uh, a half torus that was aligned correctly. This one has one, but it's not the right way on the surface. How do you make the these text bubbles go away? Oh, sorry, I forgot to move this back. <laughs> sorry. Uh, that's just the the stream source. That's from um, that's just from my broadcast. 
Uh, Sofiane, Sofian, uh, this is a mad ball from the good old 80s. Um, it's a old, it's like, it was like a cabbage patch, no sorry, garbage pail kids kind of inspired almost. I, I don't want to say inspired, I wasn't on the original design team. But like the, it, it reminded me of cabbage patch, or garbage pail kids rather. It's just a bunch of like kind of gross out there little rubber balls that live in some space universe. Um, so anyway, let's get these stitches on the other side of his face. That's a ring. That should be a good time to do Project Primitive if I wanted to stay, but I'd like them to be separate. Alright, here's what I'm going to do. Let me open up a ring 3D. I'll make a new brush. Go to Initialize. Coverage 180. You probably don't need that many. So 14 by 36, that's not too bad. Let me do 16. Get a little thicker. Okay. Make poly mesh 3D. Now I got a 3D poly mesh. I just want to make this into an IMM brush. I knew I had one of these. This is the Orb brush. Orb is the guy who's responsible for a lot of the really cool stylized environment art looks. Yeah, thought I had one of these lying around. A little too high poly, though. over here. Looks like it. Oh no wonder so many active points. Jeez. Well, I'm gonna make my own brush because I don't really think there's any reason to have that much geometry. Brush, create multi alpha, create insert mesh. Make it a new brush. Looks like that's what I want it to be doing. If I make it a curve, that's what I want. Alright, cool. So let's go curve mode, but then let's go, let's bury it a bit more.
I'll use 27 QHD. Is that uh, is that the um, Cintiq? Is that, they, is that the model number for this thing? Yeah, this is the 27 QHD. That's why my UI is 1440. Yeah, empty the submenu content fully first for it to work. I was just trying to clear the title with items inside of it. But I thought I just did that, Doug. Config, enable, customize, right? So if I go TGO, bring it over here, Control, Alt, click that, delete it, enter. Yeah, TGO is now gone. So I mean, I don't think you need to clear the items out because I, I believe that just worked. But maybe I'm mistaken, I don't know. But speaking of which, let me go back to default here. So let me grab this brush. Let me pop them out a little bit further. There you go. Further still. Those are pretty buried. This is a kind of strange little turn of events. My uh, Geo is not there. Alright, that's a new little feature. Oh, that's weird, Doug. I have uh, I'm not seen that issue. Well, I've clearly done something to ruin this brush because no longer works. You said all brushes. Wood brush. Stitches. There we go. Very bizarre. I'm not sure if anyone's seen the issue I just had there, but that's something that uh, is known. Besides practice, any advice for a beginner ZBrush? Yeah, you know, obviously, you know, everyone's probably gonna get the same response, like, oh, just practice. Um, you know, the thing I like to tell people is always just try to finish work. Um, it's really easy to kind of, you know, get discouraged with the way something's looking, and then you'll want to pull out because you're not happy with where it's going. Um, I think a lot of the biggest lessons you're gonna have in the process are gonna come from working out the things that that are not doing what what you want them to do. Um, it's something that uh, a character artist at my old studio um, advised me to that effect, and it was very helpful because it's just it was like even if I wasn't happy with the work and I was discouraged, um, simply getting f to the finish line helped me learn a lot because I would get through specifically the things that were driving me nuts and then I was like well I'm not gonna move on until I fix this and you know a lot of time maybe 
got lost into trying to solve those issues. But, you know, at the end of the day, I was um, learning those lessons now that, 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 that um, you know, served me to, to kind of be smarter about things. I'll do a quick auto group, because they're all in polygroup, delete, hidden. Now I'm going to mask by polygroups, so I can just only affect the ones I'm touching. Grab a big move elastic brush and just manually dig these in or pull these out a little bit. And then in terms of just like ways in which to practice, I think, um, you know, there's a fine artists you admire. The best thing that I did to just sort of like, I was in the very beginning, I was so bad and I was so discouraged. I was getting so mad at myself. Like, oh, why can't I do this? All these artists online can do this. Why can't I? Um, and the best thing I did to sort of get to where at least I knew kind of how to execute the strokes I wanted to execute, how to build the shapes I wanted to build. Um, I started just doing side by sides with artists I admire, meaning I would watch them. What the hell is that? I would watch them do a full sculpt, and then I would pause the video and, and try to just mirror it. I would just try to mimic what they were doing, and like even if it went really slow, like say there was like an hour video or something, um, I would just pause it and wait till I got like okay, the shapes on my screen are matching the shapes on their screen. Okay, now on, now play it and keep going. So I just kept sort of like just trying to create the things they were creating and if I couldn't I would have to watch closely see what brushes they were using see what strokes they were making see how they were creating the geo that I was like struggling to create and that answered a lot of questions for me because I was able to sort of oh you know he's using this brush but he's got back face masking on and the Z strength's way lower and that's like why those strokes are coming through the right way and it just got me to the point where I was like okay I now know how to make the shapes I want to make. Let's see if I can make my own shapes and do my own thing. Um, so, Esteban, Costa Rica, what's up? Welcome. Pura Vida. I've been to Costa Rica about five or six times. I love it down there. So, welcome. Congrats on your uh, awesome soccer team. Um, have you watched the documentary about making Halo? Um, I've not seen a documentary on it. I've seen a lot of GDC talks, but I've never seen any kind of documentary on it, no. I imagine that was a very inspirational process. Um, give me one sec, guys. My coffee is ready. I'm just going to go grab a cup real quick. I'll be right back. Standard brush is good for stuff like this because it doesn't, like the clay brushes have a sort of built-in sampling where they test the surface for, um, like clay brushes try to fill gaps more than so, um, standard. The standard brush just like pushes out against the normal. 
So it's good for shapes like this where you're trying to sort of, regardless of what's underneath the geo, just just build up and around. I'm assuming I'll have to knock some of this back as well. wanted to ask how do you sculpt the details in well that kind of depends what what details exactly I mean these these guys aren't this isn't super detailed yet like I think I'll end up getting in closer and doing some just like you know more just wrinkles and and, and you know just more try to make them a little bit more higher fidelity at some point um, and then the details I've got here have all been kind of achieved via different means um, I'm kind of dreading going in and doing all this hair because you can see it's kind of sloppy right now. Um, but the way I did the hair was just to grab, and it, you know, every it, it kind of depends on um, the specific problem you're trying to solve. I don't I don't do this all that often, but with something like hair, where there's a lot of overlapping shapes, um, I have a brush that I like. hair, fur brushes, and you can see all of these brushes have like their own little kind of different style and shapes. So, you know, maybe up the Z intensity a little bit and draw out some alphas, right? So like it's really just an alpha you're drawing out. Um, and even then it's like doesn't have really a resolution I need for it to kind of do its job. But, you know, put enough of those in, in the shape and uh, it starts to look okay as a nice little layered effect um, but it does create a lot of artifacts so I have to come back in and do a lot of cleanup um, I don't really particularly enjoy hair or fur on any living <laughs> organic model it just sucks it really sucks it's not fun um, but when you get it right it, it, it can look really nice and, and I'm not saying this is right, this has kind of got a ways to go here. But, um, yeah, so that's how I got those details done. And as far as everything else in the shapes, um, all just done by hand for the most part. Um, everything else is basically just done with a clay brush. Do I have Instagram or ArtStation? Um, you know, I do and I don't. I don't really use either. Um, 
everything we kind of do goes right into our game. I use Instagram mostly for just following other artists and, and getting inspiration from other artists I really enjoy. Um, but my Instagram and my art station are, I don't know what my art station is even up, but it's programmer.art is my Instagram. And that's a character I did in ZBrush. Um, I just threw it up there because it was like the only thing I had to still up. Um, yeah, I don't really do much of the social media promotion stuff because it's not really, you know, career-wise, it's not really something that, that I've had much of a need for because, you know, we any any art that I'm producing usually just goes right into our game. And uh, it's, it's, you know, I'm not trying to market myself as a, you know, an artist. So since I'm not marketing myself in that way, I haven't really had much need to, up, you know, run... Uh, social media presence of any kind. Um, all that being said, you know, it, it is something I wish I would do just to like take, you know, the work I produce on stream and at least kind of collect it someplace so I can kind of show the stuff I've done in the past. <laughs> but um, you know, maybe one day. It's just something that I haven't had, haven't had time to do, and, and and I think it also requires me. I would want to finish my work a little bit. I, you know. If it's not if it's not specifically for the game, like this is obviously not for a video game, um, I tend to not finish it because <laughs> the only thing that, that gets finished is stuff that I have to do for Disc Jam. why clay is good. Clay is good because you see how it kind of just fills the holes. Like the, the other than the standard brush which only works off the normal of the surface, the clay brush tries to like find gaps and fill them. Um, so it's important to recognize when you want one brush versus the other. Let's say first sub is the shape and every other level has more and more details or you just subdivide it four times to work on the highest. I definitely work low to high, bomb bim kid. Um, I definitely work low to high. Um, what, what I've been doing, it depends on the sculpt in Lodge a lot, as always, um, you know, specifically because on this sculpt, um, I just found a nice resolution, meaning like my Dynamesh resolution of 256 gets me about half a million active points, and that's gonna be good enough for me to find the shape and get the shape that I want for this particular sculpt. And then eventually what I'll do is I'll, I'll remesh it down to, you know, maybe 20,000. And then I'll start adding subdivisions. And I'll, I'll probably end up getting to that. I'll get to that point today on stream because I'm getting pretty close here with the base shape where once I put in the final stitches, um, put in the cavities of the eye and finish up the eye, um, maybe do a little bit more work on the beard. Um, you know, this guy's pretty close to where the base shapes are correct. And then I can then go low to high and then go, you know, super low subdivision, all the way to super high subdivision and, and add some like skin pores and get and get really granular with it. Who's this guy you're working on? This is a character from Mad Balls. So Mad Balls I talked about this a little bit earlier, but yeah, Mad Balls are these little gross toys from the eighties that I thought always thought had the coolest little design, so just doing a fan art for one of the Mad Balls that I like. Speaking of which, now this is something that I always bothered me about the shape. I'm wondering.
guess that doesn't work that way. That's a bummer. I wanted to do um, a deformer on all the meshes, but I don't think you can. Benjamin's a good one. Computer's completely losing his mind. I don't know why that would be. What's going on right now? Hey, Malikus, what's going on? Yeah, uh, M A H. You'll notice is the preface on a lot of my brushes down here, and uh, this material as well. He's been a very awesome uh, ZBrush contributor, responsible for a lot of the tools I use every day. <laughs> Welcome to the stream, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for your awesome tools. Mad balls were in Ready Player One. I, that's awesome. Yeah. What was it say causes auto fax drawing hair and sculptress? I'm not sure. I don't I didn't I've never used sculptress. Oh wait. Auto was this about last week using sculptress pro Hannibal? I forget. Joanne or Joanne Raguda, welcome. What's happening? Oh yeah. Painting fur on a leopard's cub, there you go. It's such a ball ache. Um so the the uh, alpha method I use work it gets you 90% of the way there, but you still got to go in. Like you'll notice, like there's symmetry here. I got to break up. I think eventually what I'm gonna end up doing is like breaking out the the beard on a separate sub tool, just so I can sit there and, and give it more resolution and not have to make this thing too high. Um, we'll see. trying to do before is I would like to use the deformer to stretch the thing forward but do it to all the sub tools because you can do you can do you know masking and transforms and stuff and have it run on all the sub tools um, but apparently that doesn't extend itself to and apparently a curve deformer does not like Geo, man, it's only... I got all these windows open, but it does not seem to want to 
not play nice with that deformer at that resolution, which is a bummer. Especially when I get a bus commission from a celebrity. Well, is the bus commission of, of like a human in realism? Because honestly, I'd rather be doing like stylized hair like this. I think I prefer doing that to. Um, or, I mean, I think I prefer doing like, like fiber mesh. I think fiber mesh is like better to use in terms of this workflow and getting a good look quickly. You know, so that's like. You know, fiber mesh is a lot. I can wield fiber mesh a lot quicker, I feel like, than I can sculpt all the strands of a stylized look. Like, stylized sculpting is just, um, you know, you go one little clump out of place of the clay, and then you gotta go correct all of them. Whereas with fiber mesh, you can be a little, you can do it kind of all over, because it doesn't really matter. Hannibal, yeah, this does look like one of the Doom guys. I actually wanted to do a 3D. I, like, one thing I want to do is, like, take a bunch of 2D or old school, like, 8 and 16 bit characters and do, like, a, a, a big 3D version of them. Maybe, you know, I'm excited to do, like, a bunch of fan butts, fan uh, arts, because they're a lot of fun. How did you get into ZBrush and how long have you been using it? Um, you know, I had it as a hobby because I got, um, I was always, I was an engineer. I've been in the games business now for about, uh, since 2006. So 12 years now I've been making video games, but as an engineer, um, and then when ZBrush like 3.5 came out, I started getting into um, just at least trying it out. And, and my, my initial sculpts were all ugly and had a long way to go, obviously, but just, you know, I stuck with it and I kept trying to get better. And I'm not even sure when ZBrush 3.5 came out, but that was kind of the beginning for me is like in terms of just, okay, I'm actually producing something that eventually I got to the point where I was producing something that I actually I was like okay this is this is decent enough um, it took a while to get there but and I'm still now I'm at the point where I you know I'm still at the point where I hate everything I do <laughs> but you know it, it, at least I'm not completely uh, you know I wouldn't want it to be seen by anybody else you know which is how it was for a very long time now I'm at least at the point where it's like okay like I can start showing some of this stuff Releasing our first game where I had to handle the, all the art, which game came out. Um, why does this keep subdividing? Stop it. Um, where I handled all the art was uh, pretty scary, but it went okay. Yeah, my computer is definitely acting up. Apologies for that. I think it's just a, a pretty, pretty solid machine here. I just, you know, I guess you get to few million points and I'm streaming. I think a big thing about it too is that I'm st ZBrush is using um, 1440 now because I got the new monitor. This monitor is um, my last monitor was 1080p. This one's 1440 and as a result I, I noticed that that specifically that those extra pixels actually was the first time I noticed ZBrush kind of start chugging on me. Um, so I think that might have something to do with it as well. New user of ZBrush, I want to create my own game, MMORPG. Well, so one thing I'll advise you there, if you're doing, like, characters, you're going to need to do skeletal meshes, meaning, like, you know, animations and skin deformations. Not necessarily, depending on what kind of game you're making, but if you're making MMORPG, and I'm guessing you're sculpting characters, um, ZBrush will not be your final stop. You're going to need to, you know, learn how to deform the guys and make sure that they're, um, you got bones and rigs and animations and stuff, so you're gonna have to spend some time learning that workflow as well, which is not a you know not a simple simple process. It's definitely one of the more complicated. Getting good deformations is really a very you know important and can be a painful part of the process. Um, but you know it's it's there's plenty of resources out there, and there's also a lot of free tools nowadays that kind of can get you get you along the way there. Um, if you're operating on a budget, I could recommend the application Akitsu, A-K-E-Y. Um, it's not as uh, 
feature complete as you know Maya Max or whatever, but it's very animation centric and it's built towards just really kind of making the workflows as easy as possible. That being said, you know I didn't find it to be faster than Maya for me, but I've been using Maya for a long time, so maybe one day this could be. But um, you know that just could be personal preference. Um, the reviews on this have been really positive. That people are really excited about it. You know, it's pretty affordable, and um, it's a good way to if you're if you're getting started learning the art. You know, it might help you just to like start with something simple like this, where there's only really four menus, or as in my there's <laughs> four thousand menus. As you can see there, it does the IK and the foot roll and all that stuff. I'm not sure how it handles dynamics and stuff like bouncing and everything like that, but like they seem to have in their demos a lot of really cool like physics like you know feeling to everything um, you know I haven't used it a ton but it's a it's a good entry point if you want to like get into the animation stuff if I have drawing JPEG of a tattoo how I put it on my sculpt's arm okay let me answer that one that's the one that we can go into so say I actually did this already once um, for a character I was using um, I had a character. So the question is, how can I take a picture of a tattoo I like and use it on my mesh? So what I tend to do in that situation is, um, let me bring up a uh, example here. So I had this image, and we had this like sort of like de demonic character, and so a fallen like the 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 theme of the tattoo was like a fallen angel, right? And so it's got some nice detail in there. Um, I didn't want to have to repaint this whole thing from scratch, obviously. Um, so I converted it to grayscale and did some adjustments in Photoshop on it, just so there would be some height variation on what I was doing, and you know eventually I turned this into an alpha and then I just made this into an alpha exported the PSD to ZBrush and then from within ZBrush I could just drag it out on the shape of the surface like anything else you know you grab like boop -a -doop -a -doo. let's import an alpha say it's this. You do a drag rectangle with an alpha and then you just drag it out. And you know if you go into the alpha menu you can tweak you know what's the mid-range and it should actually probably be inverted. Yeah there you go. But yeah so then you just drag it out and then so if that doesn't work because it's tattooed and it wraps around the arm you could also um, handle it by just if you can't like wrap it around nice because it's like too big or whatever and it wraps around weird you could also just use it as a mask alpha and then you know drag out the shape as a drag rectangle like that um, and you want to set the focal shift where's my focal shift it's over here so that way Get the full thing, get the full alpha resolution. Then with the mask, you can then come in there and clean it up a little bit, and you can do a tattoo that way. Um, and then worst case scenario, if none of that works because the geometry is too weird, the alpha shape is not coming out, you would then consider going into the actual UVs, as in like do a UV layout, take the UV layout into some texture package, and then from there um, you could just put the just stamp stamp the tattoo right on the right on the uh, UV. So that's another attempt there. So, would it be possible to light it? Uh, Hannibal, sorry, I, I'm trying to catch up here, but I'm not sure what that is. Do you mean light this? Do you mean lighten something, or, or or do you mean like get a render, like a lit render? We can get a render real quick. Um, yeah. Doing a version of the rock. Maya 
said just crashed. Well, <laughs> yeah, it, all these apps tend to crash a lot. I try to save as much as possible. CPU spiking when you rotate in 2018. Oh, is that right? I haven't. I've had. I think I've had some performance issues in 2018. If I'm being honest, Pro 4210. I've had some issues there. So, is Maya free? No, Maya is not free. Um, the cheapest one is the Maya LT. What processor do you have on the workstation? How much RAM memory do you have? I have three two gigabytes RAM, and I have an Intel Core i7 um, with like three and a half gigahertz. It was an older of the i7s. Um, I'm not sure how far, how much farther they've come, but I'm kind of a noob. Do I need to make the JPEG and Alpha. It's a back black tattoo. If it's black, you know, well, Alpha Alpha basically just means um, you still light the tattoo. Oh no, you basically just like. You just want there to be. If you want the straight, if you all, all you want is the outline, it would take you no time to drop it in there and paint over it and make it just black and white. But if you want the detail from the tattoo to like pop out um, the way I did for mine, um, you'd want the you want it to be arranged from like white, black, and the grays in between. But if you want it to be just a shape, then you want just straight black and white. Oh yeah, and Maya does have. If you have a student email, anybody, you can get a lot of the software for free. Um, always be sure to. If you have a .edu that's functioning, you can get um, .edu email address. That is, you can get a lot of these, a lot of these things for free. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Let's go back. Oops. Let me do that. Let me blast this out a little bit further. I want the detail suggested, but not necessarily that visible. these wrinkles to be present but not be distracting and uh, you can tell I'm starting to get you seen a lot of you see a lot of faceting here you're starting to get to the point where I'm like you know what, I'm, I'm gonna need to start subdividing further and splitting this out um, it's always an issue for me to like walk away from the Dynamesh and start getting into my proper subdivision levels um, I tend to stay in Dynamesh too long and I start sculpting on detail I'm gonna end up blowing out anyway I just uh, once I get out of it, I, t I, uh, I kind of I'm always reluctant to because I, I love how flexible Dynamesh is and it allows me to make wholesale changes and big changes without worrying about oh I already retoped it and got a new geo for it why'd I do that? Yeah, nuzzle tops. It's exactly how I am. I just I love that I'm like right now. It doesn't matter what I do because if I want to come in, like, you know what? I want to completely change how the eyes are done. If I'm in Dynamesh, I just like redynamesh and away I go. But as soon as I commit to the resolution, it's like okay, now I got to be very kind of considerate about what wholesale changes I want to be making. Speaking of brushes, let me go grab that one brush again. Brush here.
seems like it's decently round. Maybe it can cut out a little bit. Just trying to look at this thing, look at it, look at it small, and see if there's any areas that like appear to like break the round shape, like right there, kind of. And the best thing about going, like, the best thing about switching to low poly, or at least generating your low poly resolution, is that you can you can do a lot of these edits a lot easier. Because when you have low resolution, doing things like shaping, shaping the bigger forms is a lot easier. When you have too much detail, that you start getting these these fall off issues where your your brush fall off is contributing to the overall shape not doing what you want. That's pretty round. Round enough, I'd say. Nothing really stands out as like, oh, it's completely busted. The main thing is that like this part tapers too much, but I'm not going to be able to fix that without adjusting a lot of the other geo. And ultimately, it's all pretty. Let's see, look at it perspective mode. And with perspective, it all looks pretty solid. Fill out that back part a little bit. There's some inherent risks too to using perspective mode when you're doing something like a sphere. Just because spheres themselves are kind of. You look at them in, in perspective, you can really quickly trick the eye. Yeah, exactly, bomb kid. Like I, um, I struggle with that too, cause like I'm a game artist, and everything eventually has got to end up into the engine. So I'm always, always, always like, I, I tend to worry about topology at too early of a stage, where it's like, it's really not necessary that I worry about it just yet, but I can't help it, and so I do. And um, yeah, it just gets unnecessarily picky about what I'm, my strokes I'm making are too early of a stage. Let's get a little bit more, a little bit more action on that spike.
still just chasing down anything I think that breaks the roundness. I think I got most of the flat spots. Doing spheres with the move tool is just like not the best way to go about it. Um, you know, it's it's best to try and like sculpt it out and, and find the shapes that way. Move brush just and it's the move brush just inherently has issues. Um, again, it goes back to how it does the fall off. But using the move brush to make a sphere by just like pulling out geos is not the right way to do it. No, just kind of how I've been handling this one. Do you ever find with the insert brushes if you turn projection strength to 100 in brush modifier, it crashes the ZBrush? Um, no, but anytime I'm dealing with, and like, I guess that would depend because when, okay, so let's just talk about how that works. Um, with the insert brushes, one of the things that's cool about projection, I think I have a little one note on this as a matter of fact. Projection. Brush brushes. So projection strength is what governs this right here. Hold on one second. Okay, so um, to conform to the mesh you're adding to is projection strength the IMM. That's what there's a ask ZBrush about it and it's a very helpful tool when you're doing IMMs onto a surface. So the stronger it is basically the more it conforms. Um, so the question was about do you ever notice that ZBrush crashes when you do full projection strength IMM? And personally I haven't however it doesn't mean that it doesn't isn't prone to doing that because it's just sort of you know whenever ZBrush has to sample data um, whether you're doing a close holes operation or a uh, you know, insert mesh has to sample the, data, the 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 stuff below it, right? So um, so let's turn on projection strength to 100, and you'll see that it kind of wraps itself to the shape underneath. Um, now I've not had issues with it personally. However, like I said, ZBrush will occasionally just Oh, you know what's doing some math is trying to calculate some points in the geo and that's the kind of thing that causes crashes a lot because you're doing math to that might be like you know who knows what normals or what geo information might be under there that would cause you to have an issue but like you start doing stuff like this and it starts trying to find points in space and you can just kind of open yourself up to, to the engine the ZBrush like rendering engine like, like freaking out finding some bad memory or writing some bad memory or dividing by zero whatever those things might be but, you know, while I haven't done that to myself, um, I, I would not be surprised for that to happen. Like, if I ever do anything where I'm adding Geo, or before I do Z Mesh, before I do DynaMesh, before I do things like close holes or weld points, I always just hit number nine and do a safe project, just because it's just common to see what that happens.
that's what I want to do is to get into game art, but having a hard time with the college I chose. Well, I'll, I can tell you this, uh, more George, is that when I started getting into games, it was after I graduated college, because when I graduated in 2005, there were no, I mean, like they, they existed, like Full Sail existed, and schools like that existed. Um, however, there weren't a lot of games programs in the country. Uh, I think the USC Games master's program started up like the year before the year after I graduated and I remember being so jealous that that program existed and I did not get to go to it because I wanted to go to a thing like that where like the like ex-professionals of the games industry were teaching and lecturing computer science or computer digital arts with respect to the games industry um, that's something that I always wanted to study and you know YouTube wasn't at the level where it's at now where all these artists are just sharing their methods and Twitch didn't exist and so many things that, that now you have access to did not exist then so just like like nuzzle top says just stay learning and keep drilling it man if you put in the time you will get to where you want to go and you know i i'm still not where i want to be and i've been doing this now for a pretty long time and and it's just it's all about putting in hours you know and and for me i sh would like to you know relax more than i do but if i have any free time i'm usually like trying to get better at this stuff because so rare do i have free time because of work but when i do have free time it's like well I'm not as good as I want to be, so I better practice today. It's, that's kind of just the mentality you have to have, just to keep drilling into it, and eventually you'll be pretty happy with what you're doing. And every now and then, I produce a mesh, and I'm really excited about how it looks. And it's rare, but it's it happens, and it's a great feeling. And yeah, it, it's also important not to be too hard on yourself. Like I'm a pretty harsh critic of myself, but um, you know, don't don't be self defeating. You know, you can you can be hard on yourself and want to get better, and you're gonna need that for the when you're working through a mesh that you hate and you're upset with how much time you spent on it, and you're just like down on your down on yourself. You know, being a harsh critic is important because it's important to try and get better if you want to compete at the highest level. But at the same time, it's like you don't want to let those emotions just you know those those negative emotions can hurt your productivity as well, and you start getting defeatist, and you don't really get to the point where you're doing the kind of work and artistic work that you then you can do because it, it's really hard to be creative when you're in that mindset when you're in this sort of like bubbly inspiration mindset and you're starting a new mesh or starting a new level or starting a new character it's really easy to be creative at those points because you know you you have the image in your head and you see the future and you know what you want it to be so it's really easy to be creative in those points but when you're like 75% through the mesh and it's not looking the way you want it to it's really easy to just be like I'm all out of ideas I don't know how to make this look good this sucks I suck and you guys gotta try and fight that off as much as you can Pred what's happening welcome back good to see you man how do you increase and decrease mass with a hotkey um I don't have a hotkey set up but you can the masking command for that is uh oh you know what here's what I like to do if I'm gonna do that so I have that mask right there, right? I want to increase the mask. Or sorry, I want to decrease the mask, right? I'll control click to blur it, and then I'll control alt click to sharpen. So control click blur, control click sharpen. Ba -ba 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 -ba. That's a method I use a lot, just when I'm on the fly, um, working with the mask. What's happening here? There we go. Um, but you also have short keys here: grow mask, shrink mask. So grow mask will just continually grow the thing. It's kind of the opposite command of the blur, it looks like. Um, and you could sharpen it up with a little alt click. But you do all you know, if you wanted to put those on hotkeys, you certainly could. Those are the two commands right there. They're in the tool menu and the sub the masking sub menu. You're in full sale right now and having software problems, they won't work with me on any other software. <laughs> what uh what software are you using? More? So I think we're pretty close with this guy. Probably time to start moving sub tools. Oh, you know what? I need to fix his eye up a little bit. Here's like the actual tool or the actual thing these are all based off, off of. So I can do a little bit more. Oh, he's got another in the back of his head. I think that'd actually be cooler break up the symmetry as well. 
and it'd be a lot cooler. So I'm gonna put that that stitch in the back of his head for that scar. I think that'll be cooler. And then I can kind of come through and start doing some of these boils and stuff. I'm gonna start putting more and more detail in. I think I'm getting pretty close to the point where I want to get out of Dynamesh and start separating these subtools out. But before I do that, I want to stay in Dynamesh and see if I can smooth stronger. Yeah, and to be honest, I I I still use Windows 7, you know, and it, it, there's some software I can't use because of that. Like, it, it just there's some software they're only updating now for Windows 10. But I got Windows 10 on my laptop, and I I just it's man, it's not ready <laughs> in my in my opinion. I don't know. I mean, like people are doing just fine with it, of course, but um, I've not been uh, it has not been kind to me. Just trying to find a good cut. There we go. This is the Michael. I think his name is Michael Hernandez. He was in Malicus, is uh, what he goes by. He was in the uh, chat earlier. These are his brushes, and they're great. This is a good one for this scar right here. Just try to give it a little. He has a little pinching action as well. So I want to give it a little asymmetry. Not asymmetry, but uh, irregularity, rather. I've got that, and I've got the smooth, stronger brush. The smooth, stronger brush is good because it just uh, lets you just cut right into some geo. And it'll just let me just sort of like break this down, and hairs can continue out of it. It's a nice, just destructive brush that I can just come in and clean up in a minute. And yeah, if you do a full OS restart or reinstall, you might lose software you already have that exists, so you gotta be careful of that as well. Now it's strange you'd be able to use 3ds Max, but not Maya. I wonder what specifically. I mean, you know, the 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 one thing you want to make sure you, you do is install all software updates. Like go to Windows Update, and make sure you're all up to date there, and then also go into uh, find out what video card you have and make sure your video card drivers are up to date. That's a common one as well. Um, people don't realize how often those get updated, and then and then Maya has a new update, and then it relies on the latest version of Nvidia, and so on and so forth. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Stitches brush back that I made earlier.
Uh, Nix tools. I think I have them installed, actually. I bought them. Those are the ones that are for sale in Gumroad. I, you know, I don't have them installed. I didn't install them in 2008 yet, but or 2018 rather. I do have Nix tools. They're great. Art and time. I had them in um, my uh, 4R8. I had them. Um, I just haven't had the time. I haven't I haven't had to use them yet. Um, so once I have the need to use them, I'm sure I'll fire those in there pretty quick. Once again, this is a standard brush is good for just popping things out along the normal. Um, a clay brush here would start doing weird things with the, the peaks and valleys of the surface. Whereas you can be a lot more destructive with um, substance or uh, standard. If I go down to seven, but if you have a license, it's transferable. So like, if you've got a ZBrush license, and I'm not sure about the other software you're using, but your ZBrush license is totally transferable. And worst case scenario, you can, um, <laughs> Windows 10 is stupid, completely <laughs> agree. Uh, yeah, it is, Windows 10 is stupid, I can't stand it. Um, yeah, Pred, this is the uh, video game study music, which I've been rocking a lot lately. I love it. It's a nice long playlist of video game music. Yeah, it depends too. Like, I use Windows 7 still because I prefer it. And the first thing I did when I got my new laptop, um, I got one of the, the tablets, and I, I just... It took me a while because I had to do a lot of driver research, but I just ripped down all the drivers for the hardware I had and, and did a Windows 7 install, and it was a great machine for as long as I had it. Um, my new laptop's only on Windows 10 still because for our game, Disc Jam, we need... It's only Windows 10 machine in our little two-person company, so I need the Windows 10 machine to... Um, to, uh, you know, for testing. So I'm like, oh, we have a Windows 10 only issue, so I'll have to fire up my laptop and, and test it out. If, if, even if your Windows, it's like, it, it'll be licensed to your specific Windows install, but then you can, you can go and release the license, and worst case scenario, you'll have to send an email to Pixelogic, and they usually get back same day, and say, okay, here's your updated license. But again, like, yeah, you know, trying to get it, I think the goal is obviously you want to keep it working on Windows 10. Um, and yeah, Maya's definitely built on a different framework and code base for sure because they, they acquired those two software companies. They weren't always Autodesk, I don't believe. I'm, I'm sure at one point they like Autodesk acquired the individuals. So they, they're, they're still going to be different code bases. They're still, I mean, like, that's why, that's why they haven't kind of merged into one app, right? I mean, like, they have a lot of different, it's all built on different architecture.
Get the OS swap from Mac to Windows. Yeah, I mean, I haven't been able to find Mac very useful, but it's just I'm not very familiar with it. So <laughs> stop going to Windows 7 makes me want to puke. Well, you know, to each his own. Windows 7, in my opinion, is far superior. Yeah, Mord, <laughs> you have to learn to love Windows 10. I honestly like try to love it. Like I've had to like just try and customize the OS so much on my on my laptop, um, just to try and uh, you know live with the evil. But uh, you know I'm, I'm not there yet. <laughs> the main thing is that it's got the new DirectX 12, and and there's apps that only run on it. For example, like uh, the, the the you know what's a big thing about Windows 10 is their um, their tablet interface and just like the touch stuff. Like I've got a touch enabled monitor, but um, touch was wasn't really the touch support like the OS level touch support wasn't really there um, in Windows 10 and like wasn't really native but now like, with, like what they're trying to do with surface and also like now like the API for software to interface with touch in Windows 10 is a lot more sophisticated so like you can actually use touch in Photoshop whereas right now I can't um, clip studio paint also like the touch doesn't really work in Windows 7 but I'm being led to believe it works in Windows 10 You'll notice I say it. I won't commit that it does. I believe that when I see it as well. The only reason I'm blowing this stuff out is because I'm going to come back in with this brush in a second here and do some more hair on it. and round. You hated Windows 7. How'd you hate Windows 7? When it came out, it was like everything they screwed up with Windows, uh, I guess it was Vista. It was a perfect combination because Windows was like really good at having a, an OS. Every other every other iteration was good because like Windows 98 was a big leap forward. Then they had like the Windows ME, which was like hilarious. Then it was like uh, Windows XP, which was great. Then it was Windows Vista, which was a joke, barely worked. And then Windows 7 came after Windows Vista, and I was just like, all right, this is great. And honestly, I think Windows 7 is still the best one ever, ever to be released. Um, okay, this is going to be tricky, because what the hell, what would all this hair be doing? Break that out, do some of this. And then, you know, and, and right in step with that, you got Windows 10, which is just like such a combination. I mean, the fact they have like two interfaces, I mean, wh who is the guy who said we're going to do two interfaces? Like, oh, we have like a little kind of tablet-esque 
Apple style app interface, and then we have like the traditional Windows 7 interface. Pick one. They do everything the same, just a little bit different. The main thing I hate about Windows 10 is how much it like is always shoving, are you sure you want to do this? It's like it's it's always trying to do handholdy stuff, and it's like, isn't Windows meant to be a little bit less handholdy for those of us who like are annoyed by all that stuff on Apple? It's like, are you sure you want to open this Word doc? It's like, come on, guy. Yeah, XP and Win7 were the, the best ones in my opinion. Yeah, palm rejection is kind of janky across the board. Um, you know, which I, I don't even know that you can solve that problem. I think that's just kind of necessary evil. I have to turn off touch a lot just because it's like when, when I hit my palm down. I have a lot of Although my app, my iPad doesn't have that problem. My iPad's pretty good at like stylus touch. Like it, it, a lot of the apps are pretty good at, at that. The surfaces do look cool though. I haven't had one yet. My wife has one. They look pretty rad. No, disable UAC. UAC is not enough. I already do that for sure. Osmo say. I hope I get your name right. But yeah, no, I, I, I disabled UAC. I've gone through all those things, but there's still some things that like just like prompt. Uh, the What's it called? The, um, like I'll disable the UAC and that'll do most of the, that'll like handle a lot of the problem. But then um, running with administrator rights and things like that, like those, I had to like get into like the power settings to like make that at least a little bit more reasonable. Um, which drove me nuts. Oh, dude, I didn't... Oh, I'm so annoyed. I believe... I screwed this up. Cause I lost my poly paint because I wasn't... I did a Dynamesh without my poly paint turned on, so I lost all my poly paint, which is fitting. All right, let me grab it and get it back here. All right, MRGB fill object. Let me at least get that much going. I save this off. If I clone that and load the other one, I should be able to get those things back. There we go. Let me grab that material, that color. So frustrating. Yeah, but I have 10 Pro, and it's still way too handholdy when you compare it to Windows 7. And like I said, they're still like trying to shove that Windows Store down your throat, and that's an ecosystem that I think is really kind of insulting to the user, like trying to cultivate their own little app store. And don't kid yourself, that's 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 a financial decision. That's not a that's not a user. That's not a you know that's not a decision for their consumers. That's because they're trying to close a marketplace like Apple does, and then they can juice thirty percent out of the marketplace and start setting their own rules for what developers can do, and in a lot of ways limit what the consumer can do. Like that Windows Store and a little like app app layer that they're trying to push. That's all a business decision. It's not a usability decision. That's not trying to make the OS better. That's trying to make people more money for doing less work. And Cortana, I mean, do I even need to say anything other than the name Cortana? Can I just leave it at that, or do we need to even talk about it? Because, you know, let's get real.
How do you make such a brush? Uh, Jan or Jan? I'm not sure if it's Jan or Jan. Um, which brush are you talking about? I got a few here. You mean the hairbrush that I was just using? Yeah, Nuzzle, I did the same thing. I put all that stuff, uh, I put all that, I turned all that stuff off and it still finds a way to like creep its way in. Like I use the screen clipper tool by OneNote a lot just to like take a quick screen clip and throw it in a binder. And um, it, uh, it still finds ways to like, <laughs> like disable Cortana and it's still like, hey, I noticed you just clipped something. What would you like? To, it's like, dude, what is she? Nothing to, she has nothing to do with this operation. Get out of my face. Meanwhile, everyone's writing these articles about how AI is going to take over the world, and <laughs> uh, if, I, if there's one AI that does something smart, then I'll buy it, but I haven't seen that yet either. Siri, Siri. <laughs> Directions to Italian restaurant, Siri. Here's movie times in your area. Yeah, g the Gaiazzo app's really good. Um, I don't know why, I just like the, the one for one note I'd like a lot because I, I can just throw it on a hotkey and it goes I don't know why the workflow has been really good. Gaioza is really good too because it has that sharing built into it. Um, yeah, it's a cool app. I like that too. All right. All right, there we go. I'll probably have to blur that out a little bit, but at least it's there. Uh, no, no problem. No, no limits. I guess it's probably the Facebook. Probably the same guy from Facebook, right? Um, so um, this isn't a this isn't a VDM brush actually. This is just a regular old alpha. I'll bring out the brush again. Here it is. First strands three. So this is just a, a brush alpha, and I think you can actually. I think it's only like I think these only cost a buck. I forget where I got these from, but there's a little set of stylized hair brushes. Uh, maybe in here has more information about them. Let's see if we can find them because I want to give this artist credit. Stylized hair brushes, Z brush. Um, ooh, 61 free IMM brushes. I like that. Let's come back to those. Oh, this is the image for them. Free fur brushes. There you go. These are free. I thought I paid for them, but Jared. Everson made these, and here's the download. And yeah, these are good brushes. I use them for the stylized hair look a lot. Um, where the hell are they? Oh, now they're 250. I guess they were free at some point. But I bought them, and they're well worth it because they're good. Um, the the alphas are created in a good in the, in a in a nice, you see it has that fall off at the top, so it kind of, if you layer them, they come out of the bottom well. Um, yeah, so that that's the brush I used, and if you wanted to make your own, if you didn't want to buy one, you know, all you want to do is sort of make alphas that are similar to, these are all just alphas, and it's just, um, let's see if I can open this folder. So all they really are are these types of images, right? So you could you could author this yourself and go into Photoshop or whatever your image editor of choice is and build some some alphas that look like this, where nice and soft, but have good defined spines. Like you want like a good spine on a on a stylized hair strand like that. And um, you know that's all he's done here is just make some stylized brushes and then threw them into ZBrush as alphas, and then 
put that on a drag rectangle brush, intensity of 55, and uh, there's your hairbrush, right? Like, ooh, I haven't done it with color. If I do it with a little bit of color, it'll break this up a little bit better. Get a little bit more Z intensity here. So these aren't vector displacement brushes because the main thing about VDM brushes is that when you have a VDM brush, you want it to um, what's the word? You want it to sort that. It's it's mostly for like if you have overhangs and stuff, and you need the geo to be smarter than that. But these are all alpha based brushes, and they don't really have any overhanging geo, so it's not a big deal that they um, are only just pure alpha data, meaning just black and white. You know how it's basically a height map essentially at the end of the day. I do like how the color is kind of breaking that up a little bit. Maybe I'll do a little soft spray. Just to break up that transition. I want it to be as harsh as it is. Maybe giving the, maybe hinting at the illusion that some of these strands are see-through. So you don't really see like a harsh black on that edge right there. So I'm just kind of painting out the edges and try to make it a little bit more graded. Yeah, it looks better. I should probably do that all over the whole thing. transition as opposed to having that hard line. Under the lips not as important. There we go. Yeah, alphas and brushes is really fun. Yeah, Nuzzle, that's exactly how I feel about it. Like, on my laptop, it's like, like I've eliminated as much of that stuff as I can, and it's, it's not all bad. You just use the apps, and and there's there have been a lot of performance increases, and, you know, with the latest drivers and DirectX 12, um, you know, visual performance has increased on the platform, which is nice, and those are all things that matter to me a lot. Um, but, you know, due time. scar in the back now. I think that looks okay. Gosh dang it. His head's still just malformed though. I think that's totally not round at all. It's just driving me nuts. start with a pretty solid base sphere just for the simple fact that it keeps you honest. This is the move elastic brush. It's different than the regular move brush and can be helpful for uh, Moving things without destroying the geo. The 
tends to move things like on the hole and like hold their sh like holds their shape a lot better. Although I guess it would make sense that part of his head would have have a big dent in it, <laughs> where that scar is. So maybe the correcting the uh, roundness is not the biggest deal. But I just found a flat spot. I hate seeing a flat spot on a circle or on a sphere. It drives me nuts. Yeah, and then alphas is exactly how like that's my preferred way to like if I want to add custom shape detail, I'll go into Photoshop, make an alpha, and and draw that out like very customly like very controlled craft and alpha with like really precise edges and throw a little blur on it and then bringing that into um, ZBrush is uh, my favorite way to do like custom shapes and stuff like that I think that's just you get really cool results there and you have the flexibility of working in your 2d package um, where's the bit that orb does on this if you guys haven't seen the guy from Blizzard his name's um, Was a brush that I made for like maybe making a I forget his name. Uh, cracks on like rocks. Michael Vicenti, he's responsible for the Z Orb and, uh, brush set. Like, um, he's excellent, he's such a good artist. He's like really good at that chunky blizzard style, right? Um, this is from the Z Brush Summit 2016. It's a good talk anyway. The blizzard guys talk about their how they use Z Brush and if just getting familiar with the engine, it's worth sitting around to listen. Um, but he's got a method in here where he does uh, he does exactly what I was just talking about he does the alphas the way I was telling you if I could just find it which I cannot I know Michael Vicente art station that's where it is Yeah, okay, here it is. Bevel tip in ZBrush using alphas. Like, he talks about how he gets the um, specific... Uh, damn it. He talks about how he gets the specific result in Photoshop that they use at Blizzard, which is, like... Builds a cool style, right? Builds a cool alpha, and then does some procedural effects like glow, fuzzies the, gl fuzzies the thing, then sharpens it, brings up to high subdivision level, and then like cleans it up, and then you have like your nice blizzard style alpha, you know, where it's got that nice bevel, and it's real chunky, um, and it's all pretty, it's all pretty simple stuff really, like all it is is like, okay, pick your thing, and then like, if you want to get that nice spine where it, where it sticks out, um, you know, you can get that procedurally using the shape kind of shape analysis stuff that Photoshop does so that's a really nice way to get to get that kind of geo I too collect pro <laughs> yeah I, I the radial flade slider yeah Pred's got a good point um, the radial flade slider is, is, is helps you there and I got my alpha submenu here, so if I ever need it, it's just like everything. Everything for alphas is in there. There's RF radial fade. Yeah, I love the Blizzard style as well. It's great. Um, it's funny how many people are, are, are working in it nowadays. It kind of became like that sort of de facto stylized look All right, I've got the scars down I've got the majority I think 
I've got most things figured out here. I think this gum line's a little bit off. Ah! Hold on one second, someone's at the door, right back. Alright, I'm back. What's up, T? Yeah, we are. Thomas, uh, T.S. Whittlebach here is Thomas. He's got an amazing... Um, he's also another one of our streamers here. He does the coolest stuff. I'm not sure what, what your schedule is, but he does really rad, intricate sculpture. So be sure to check him out as well. Yeah, here he is. Pretty good. Um, going on the um, tutorial. ZBrush channel. On, um, cut really cool stuff. Did you ever try the um, the sphere challenge? I pulled out. It wasn't working for me. These are all symmetrical still, so I probably want to break the symmetry on this stuff. Yeah, and I've heard a okay, quick question. I've imported a mesh from Maya into ZBrush, but I think the size changed. Anybody make the size equal back in Maya? Yeah, okay, there's actually, this is a good question because there's a few ways that, the Poseidon art, there's a few ways that this can go wrong for you. Um, I've struggled so much with scale <laughs> over the course of uh, my life. Um, and I s remain still a problem I'm having. Let's see, let me delete this old one so I don't get it lost. Okay, delete all those. Delete that as well. Let's go back to this. Okay. Save project. Okay. Um, there's a couple things to keep in mind. One, if you go on a tool import export, a lot of times this scale factor will be automatically set for you by the software. And so it's troublesome because it might just decide whether you're doing a gozi and you're going back and forth or you're doing a full import, right? Um, it automatically starts messing with your scale which can be a problem. Um, and then also, if you go into Preferences, Import, Export, um, I thought there was something about scale in here, but I guess I'm mistaken. Um, so long, and s long story short, it's just, it's really tough to sort of nail down an agreement. Like once I basically get Gozi and ZBrush, like listening to the proper scale between Maya and both, I just like, only ever at that point leave it as it is over here. Like once I finally establish that it's like correct, occasionally I'll come. I, like the main problem is that like ZBrush is basically in millimeters and Maya's default unit is centimeters and Unreal Engine's if you use Unreal Engine, its default unit is centimeters. So I've long struggled to find a workflow where I can very quickly go back and forth between Maya and ZBrush, as well as you know not have to work at too big or small a scale that. I'm constantly exporting with with different multipliers, things like that. So, you know, it, it's it's difficult because if you're doing a skeletal mesh, for example, if you're doing a character and you have your rig already kind of built, you want to be at world scale. You don't want to be working on a on a skeletal mesh where you're at one tenth scale. Um, if you do want to work, what I basically ended up doing is committing. Because here's a problem too: if this were if this were ten times as big as it is, like imagine if I was like this exact mesh x10. This is the biggest my ZBrush is gonna get brush-wise. Now, of course, I can always do dynamic, right? And then like it'll scale dynamically, or I can disable dynamic rather. What am I doing here? 
dynamic brush should be changed only by double clicking. Yeah, double click. Why can't I? Do I have to change that somewhere else? Yeah, double click. Okay, so like, I can do the dynamic brush thing where it just like is always, you know, the same size. But I'd much rather prefer to be dynamic and just stay the size I needed to. Um, so to do that, you kind of have to respect what ZBrush's like boundaries are. And again, like if you do unify, that'll put everything in one one one. That'll put everything in like it'll do its best to fit it to. This is like ZBrush's internal resolution for like one unit, one unit, one unit. That's what unify will do. It'll um, it'll make everything into the basically the unit. I guess I guess it would be a cube. Um, so it, working within ZBrush's like internal resolution is pretty, you know not necessary but it makes things easier across the board so that being said that's gonna be in millimeters and so when you go into Maya if you're working in centimeters you're gonna be off by a degree um, I've tried adjusting Maya to work in millimeters and then like export bigger like, I've tried a lot of different things that mess with scale the main thing you want to do is just agree on your scale and your origin as early as possible because it's it's something you you need to set up the pipeline that it goes back and forth. So like just if you're doing just a block out mesh, like throw a cube in there. It's like this is supposed to be one meter, and then put that one meter cube or that one centimeter cube, and just have it go back and forth as like a placeholder. And in the very beginning, agree on a scale, and you should be able to go back and forth with Maya and ZBrush with that set to one. And then when it comes time to go into the game engine, you can export it at whatever resolution you want or size rather. Um, so I hope that helps. It's just it's some things like like trying to get it to the point where it, you know, understands they're correcting it can be really difficult. Then, you know, that being said, um, you could also go into, yeah, also that's a good point, Pred. Pred mentions the Dynamesh resolution is totally based on scale. So you want to just commit to like using, like ZBrush for me became like the one thing where I can't really work outside its native scale because issues with the brushes, issues with Dynamesh, issues with like, you know, I want to frame the mesh up, apply a, a, something globally to it. Like, oh, here's a good example. When you're doing deformers, if you want to do these kind of deformers, that's all also going to be relative to the scale of the thing. So if I want to do inflate, I can inflate this right now pretty pretty decently because it's like that's the relative scale that it is. But if this brush was 10 times the size, if this subtool is 10 times the size, if I try to do an inflate like that, you're you're not even going to notice it, right? So. Yeah, so working in millimeters, as he mentions, is, is, is key, right? As Thomas just mentioned. Um, oops, what am I done? There's the mad balls, the other ones. I'm gonna probably do a few more of these. I wanna try, I wanna do, um, the next one I wanna do, I love the guy with the, with the fist holding the head. There's a lot of detail there. There's a lot of really cool designs here. Um, so I'll probably do a few of them just because it's just really fun. Oh yeah, this slobulus. This is the one I want to do next. Slobulus. <laughs> Half his eyeballs falling out. He's just got a cockroach for walking across his lip. I love it. Um, this guy's almost done, really. Honestly, I just got to do better. I got to do more paints, and then I'll probably split out, do some detail. Um, but the you know get the paint where I want it to be. Break the symmetry up a little bit more, and uh, start detailing. Um, what's the other thing I wanted to show regarding scale? I guess that's about it. Here we go. This is ZBrush version 2018, Idris. There you go. I'm just realizing I'm over here showing demonstrations and the chat is blocking a lot of it, so my bad. <laughs> okay, where's OBS? That's there, okay. Alright, we're all set here. Got the gums, got that. Yeah, I just watched the the Mad Balls movie is all on YouTube. So if anybody wants a blast of the past, Mad Balls movie, it's on YouTube. Escape from Orb, and it is a lark. Ba 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 ba. 
And I, the TV show didn't get as uh, gross. It was a lot more kid friendly. Um, yeah. You know. It's not bad. It was a good show. Those two were hilarious. Just a bunch of uh, just a bunch of alien balls who wanted to rock and roll and are being persecuted for their belief in rock and roll. Powerful message, poignant. All right, let's see if we can get this guy a little farther along here. It's funny when you watch like a show like from your youth and like you hear these sound bites and like I, when I when I watched that I, there was the other night I, I fired up that Madball thing I, was, like, I haven't seen this since I was I, mean, I haven't seen them since I was like since like the early 80s like it's been you know almost probably 30 years I mean it's forever since I've seen that and then like you hear sound bites and stuff that just like bring you right back where it's like oh man like that used to be embedded in my mind and just like some some dumb little comment about like like the inflection and the tone of it and just like all of a sudden it's like like oh my god like that's what that's from like it's like something that I would still hear in my head every now and then when it like, would remind me I don't even know where, where, what part of my subconscious that reminder would be coming from you're like oh wow from the mad balls thing would want to pop these out a little bit more so they, they at least stick out, but I want it to still kind of retain its form of being like pretty round. So like, I like how they're like staying true to the, uh, the source there, like they're kind of fastened against the head, but that part of the ear would be kind of out a little bit.
So what I did there was I pulled it out with the regular move brush and then I pushed it back in with the elastic move brush. So like I, I pulled out the form to be a little more rounded and then I pushed it back in like as a whole. So like I wanted it to be closer and more like fitted better. See now it's like fitted a little bit more curved to the shape. Kayla Yvonne, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. How do you get the spaces between your toolbars on the side and your canvas so narrow? It's so much better. Yeah, no limits. That that was actually, um, I'm. This is like the only thing that like the number forty three. <laughs> that's the that's the number. If it's forty four, it's too big. Forty two is too small. The default size thing's like forty five or forty six, but forty three is is the button size that works for me. Um turned off wide buttons put that on 43 and then from there it was just a matter of regular regular customization so yeah that's a big that was uh that was key for me spent a lot of time trying to get my ui just right all right let's see if i can cut into these eyeballs a little bit because he does have a little bit more of a he does have like an eye bag I'm kind of scared to break this up now because I kind of like it where I'm at. I can view my work for feedback. Yeah, if you want to share your work, I'll take a look. 43 and not 42, not 44. The banana splits or the cross. I don't think I know what either of those are. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think the first time I did a... Uh, I, know these guys. I think the first time I did the Mad Balls on stream, we started going through... Um, oh, God, what were the... We started going through some of the old cartoon intros. Amazing song. <laughs> I hope kids these days have content that's as good as this stuff was. Because there were so many good cartoons when we were growing up. And maybe it's just the fact that I was young and everything was kind of cool, but... The audio production value is so fantastic. DuckTales, this, Darkwing Duck, there's so many good songs. What was the one with the... With the Tail spin. Was that what it was called? Uh, what was the one with the flu planes? 80s cartoon planes. I'll find it. Tailspin. I knew it was Tailspin. Yeah. Tailspin theme. Oh my god, this is so good too. There really were a lot of shows about animals in various predicaments and human situations. This was the this is the goat though. This is the absolute greatest of all time. Never been a better opening theme than this. Doesn't get any better than this. Are there lyrics back here? No lyrics. Wait for the best word in English language. You miss it, because the, the word is daring do. Daring do came from the phrase daring to do by Chaucer. Daring do basically just means daring. Our action is playing. 
Tales of Daring do bad and good luck tales? Is there a better lyric in the history of all cartoons? I don't think so. It's too good. Too good. And again, like, I'm obviously in my 30s now, and I don't know what the kids are into these days, but I'm not saying things these days aren't as good as they were. I'm not that old to make that argument yet. I'm just saying I hope I'm I hope that they have stuff as good as that stuff was cuz that stuff was great. And the one thing I never got into and and, and my wife will fight me on this is uh, she liked the, the David the Gnome show and I uh that was the one when I was even when I was a kid I was like these gnomes are lame. <laughs> that was one I just never got into. Well, that was just a little. It was a little too soft. It was a little, not a lot of action in that gnome show. Although she, she says she claims that it was like super dark, and I just must have just went over my head at the time. It always seemed a little vanilla for my tastes as a youth. And I would apologize to those of you who are going to have those songs in your head the rest of the day, but I don't think it's anything I should have to apologize for, because you should be thankful for that. Yeah, it wasn't dark, right? She claimed that it was... Uh, I didn't find it to be very dark. Lancelot Link, Secret Chimp. Lancelot Link, Secret Chimp. It's uh, 70s is before my time. I was born in 82. David the Known, there it is. <laughs> this one's before my time, I don't think I've ever seen this. This is a live action show about a crime fighting chimpanzee team, huh? It's pretty exciting. <laughs> This is a concept that I feel like had more legs than it got into. I mean, if there was a, if there was like a web, if there was a web series that was just basically chimps doing stuff to human dubs, I would watch the hell out of it. I think there's an opportunity to revive this. Uh, Zerat Dragons, there it is. It's too busy. I couldn't find your link amidst all of the uh, nostalgia links. <laughs> Jace and the Wheel of Warriors. I never heard of that. Battle of the Plants. I never heard of that either. Alright, let's do a quick review here. Marco. Let's check out the model. Your low poly geo looks, looks nice and sound. My web browser's frozen up here. There you go. Yeah, I dig it. It's pretty solid. Um, I think uh, I think one thing is that the the materials being kind of all the same shader is kind of throwing me a little bit um, the uh, the eyelashes being such a matte gray and looks like you have like a little bit of a gap there um, is in the same as the eyes like you know with, with hairs and things like that you'd, you want to try and see if you can get a little material separation um, but it does look as though uh, let's get your wireframe up here It does look as though you did a good job um, retopologizing. Re um, I think there's some. Uh, you probably want to break this this uh, collar. It looks like you did like an auto decimate on the collar. Um, and you got a lot of geo poking through here. So I don't know. If, is this supposed to be for a game or just for just? Is this for if this is for a game mesh, which I would assume it is based on the fact that it's low poly. Um, you're gonna have trouble skinning it for the reasons of some of this geos interpenetrating. 
um, these geos on the collar doesn't seem to have um, uniform topology throughout and you would probably want that just to be nice cylindrical you know loops around um, like I don't think you're gonna get away with uh, deforming it unless you do a little bit more work on your on your polygons there um, but it looks like you have roughness as an input to the thing and you have bump maps as inputs so um, yeah I think I spent a little bit of time just uh, doing a bit more work on material definition because you know you want those eyes to be a little bit more liquidy and the mouth if it's just a little bit shinier um, it would really help separate what you're doing here even with the stylized look like this um, I think you would, you, it would go a long way to sort of having the metal of this this metal this metal cuff being the same material as the skin and the horns and the eyes and the teeth um, I think you're kind of you're missing a read there um, yeah but overall it looks solid I mean um, the low poly like I said looks looks pretty good and you're not wasting too much geo um, it's hard to see without when it's triangulated it's hard to see uh, if, presuming it's going to go into a game engine um, it's hard for me to see like where your edge loops are you probably want to do your low poly in quads at least so you can maintain edge flow here and it, it can read a little bit cleaner um, yeah overall a solid model I like the color palette I like the design I like the the rings and all the on the I like all the sort of added accoutrement on there you might want to think about putting some of these gems in the in the the crown too because the crown's a little bit um, dull considering how much other details going on you want to break up you know you always want to, the eye is always drawn to contrast so you know contrast of value contrast of hue but also contrast of like shape and detail so you know if you had a little bit more detail in the face going against the lack of detail in the body it might it might help um, with the read there and it's also it seems like a little blobby because it, it just looks like it kind of just you can kind of make out where the clay is there and you probably want that to be a little harder surface right because these are all supposed to read as hard surface shapes but they read more as like clay tubes you have, you have a, sh a shape missing right there but yeah looks like I mean looks like you're well on your way there I remember getting smart Mighty Ducks had a cartoon oh I remember this this was a good show Oh, you know what show? What was the show with Bo Jackson? I actually was eating breakfast the other day, and there's a guy having a kind of a loud conversation one table over from me, and he was talking about this cartoon he worked on. He was like the producer on this cartoon that how difficult it was to get everybody signed off on it, and it was this cartoon. It was the Michael Jordan, Bo Jackson, Wayne Gretzky cartoon. History. I used to love this cartoon when I was a kid. Your dad may not be here, but it's just not solving you. kids' problems, Something's one up. conflict at a time. Slow down. But the boy is Denisola. Take both. Oh, man, so good. Nicktoons were the best. Ren and Stippy was the best. There was a few shows on Nickelodeon that uh, Ren and Stippy was my favorite because it was just like so out there. Yeah, Marco, Mark, if you want to share your profile, I'll take a look. Um, yeah, Pred's got good advice there too. The Harlem Globetrotters did have a good series. That was one. David the Gnome. Was, okay, so Alvaro Garcia Fernandez says David the Gnome was pretty dark. It ends. Yeah, that's see, my, my wife's. We were arguing whether it's dark or not, and so and I was saying I don't. I remember being like super soft. My wife doesn't even believe it's fake. She thinks that she believes it was a pretty real. For instance, it ends with the main characters dying. It does? Yep, just their time. It's not bad. <laughs> oh, man. ZBrush version. This is 2018. I just... David the Moment was pretty dark. I honestly... Uh, I just thought it was just too cheeky. I, when did, I wish I remember what it was before and after. Because I remember as soon as David the Gnome came on, I was like, ugh, time to go outside. It was like the last thing I did. Was it Gummy Bears and Dave the No? 
Yeah, so gummy bears, but I was just, the first thing I showed was gummy bears. This song is even so cheesy. There are many things to say. It just would seem like it was just... No, I don't know. I didn't watch it ever. I was just like, ugh. Kangaroo Adventure. Wow. Artstation.com Oh, sorry to spoil you guys, but apparently it gets uh, pretty tragic at the end. <laughs> but I'm being told over here that it's not tragic because it was just like their time, so it wasn't sad. So there's Marco from Santiago Chile's portfolio. Ooh, I like this. These are really cool. So it looks like these are more for just like, you know, high-end renders more than they are like game meshes. But I'm not saying this. Not one's better than the other. I think that it's it's a different type of result, a different goal. Oh yeah, these are great. I love these. You got really good material definition. Um, I would love to know how you set up these shaders. Looks like Cinema 4D. I think I saw one of these. Yeah, these are really cool renders. I like them because they're they're realistic. I love I love when you get realistic shaders on stylized forms. That's one of my favorite kind of. Th I, I love this because like the cloth looks real. The water shader is great. You have realistic camera, depth of field, and um, even a little bloom happening. <laughs> the color palette's good. The you know image range is good. Um, but it's obviously a super cartoony, stylized uh, subject. And I think that's just one of my favorite things is when people can artistically play with that. Um, this is a really cool one, too. Yeah, I think you have a really... You have a great talent for for mixing real and and imaginary that one's really cool yeah I'd love to see more like process work like, I'd love to see more work in progress stuff because I think your final results are all really strong that's a really cool so that's a great one too again like you know really kind of realistic materials juxtaposed with 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 stylized and kind of cartoony stuff I think it's really cool it's awesome yeah, you should be really proud of that stuff. It looks cool. So, do you do your short? Do you do your sh like? Where do you do your rendering? What package do you use to render? The same Illustrator did this. Wow. Cinema. Looking at ZBrush now. Yeah, it's like it was like it was their time, basically. It was like it was like there was no sadness about it. It was just like okay, time to move on. That was like the ending. I bet you the books were probably pretty cool. I wonder um, if like the books had a little bit more creative license to, you know, explore more serious subjects. I just found the show was always just kind of like. You know, and, and the gummy bears would lead into it, and the gummy bears are like fighting against trolls and like bonking on their heads and being silly, and then like they would have a lot of personality, and then eventually they would, uh, you know, save the princess, do whatever they needed to do, and it was like defeat all the defeat all the trolls, and it was kind of, and then Dave the gnome would come in with all these like serious themes. <laughs> I just wasn't for me as a kid.
this gum line would like affect that one tooth there, but I know it wouldn't be completely left alone. I just don't want it to get like kind of too ridiculous. Yeah, see, like I feel like it was better when it wasn't there. Yeah, no problem. And again, like I, uh, you know, I'm just giving you. I mean, again, like I'm not a, not an expert in in all these fields. I I tend to focus on game. Tend to focus. I mean, my main, my only professional experience is is with game meshes and stuff like that. So other other than that, like the only critique I can really offer is just that of a, a um, observer who's into 3D art. You know, I'm not a as far as like creating professional renders and things like that, it's just not my typical, you know, occupation, I guess the word is. away from the gum line. Maybe that'll kind of help me. In the reference it doesn't really have any gum line there, but I think just the way it's shaped it seemed like it would need to. The lip hanging down like that. There we go. Then it looks like the gum line is going straight across. And that's better for take these bottom teeth here. Mask by polygroups all the way up. <laughs> yeah, Tom well, Thomas, what do you do your rendering in, by the way? Out of curiosity, you always get some solid renders. I'm still using. I use basically, if I'm not using the game engine itself, I'll use Keyshot. Um, Keyshot kind of does everything I needed to. But then again, I don't really spend a lot of time on material definition because anytime I'm going to do material definition stuff, it's usually just you know for the game. So I'll just do it all in the game engine. Yeah, like I, I would love to pro. I would love to check out that book of Ryan Portvilitz. Portvilitz, can't really pronounce that well. Um, how do you say that name? Rain, Ryan, Rain, Rim. I want to see that book though. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Rendering is like such a pain. I never really spent the time and wanted the time to to dig in it. But Keyshot makes it so easy. Like, oh wow, like really good renders with some really minimal setup. So I started using Keyshot, and it's been, it's been perfect for like whenever I finish a sculpt. This guy's got a great art style. 
I love this kind of paint. He reminds me of like Leon Decker. I bet you this is a solid book, honestly. Surprise me. Yeah, see, I love stuff like this. I love just like painterly. Give me some more surprises. You only got three pages to surprise me with. Drop a quick wish list on this bad boy. How big? How many pages is this? Two hundred pages. And it's only eight bucks. Give me a break. Wish list that. I'm gonna get that book. There's probably some great stuff in there. Uh oh, looks like my ZBrush is about to crash. No, don't do it. All right, nice. Who is he? The guy I just said. That is the guy who I guess came up with the universe. It's in chat up there. I don't. I just butchered his name twice. Uh, Rain Ryan. It's a Dutch name that I can't pronounce well. Oh, the complete note. This is a different one. That one, that first one was 212 pages. This one is 414 pages. Oh, I'll wish list this one as well. <laughs> I assume there's probably some overlap there. I wonder if this one has like includes the first one. Yeah, I love, I love good painters. I just, I wish that was a talent that I had. That's really inspiring. Oh man, it's two forty already. Time is flying. Yeah, his trolls are awesome. The monster designs are really cool. Maybe we'll do a monster design on the follow-up stream here. Okay, so. This dude's eye bags. He does have like a little bit of a eye sack right here that goes underneath this geo. There is a little cheek part that comes out like that. These things are a bit farther back as well. My following Dave Greco. That name sounds familiar, but I don't believe I'm following on Twitch. I think I, I feel like I know this artist. Oh wow. Lead items for Crowfall. This guy have a lot of pred. This guy do a lot of um Oh wow, this guy's great. Man. So I take it his Twitch channel is pretty big. some gaming, does some work on stream. Yeah, I could watch this stuff all day. I honestly, like, watching uh, concept people work is just, it's too good. I could watch this stuff all day long. Drop some followers. Drop those followers. I've been doing a lot more traditional stuff myself actually lately. I've been doing like um, 
just trying to get like in the swing of things so that I can like get back to it. I used to be decent, but I've been so uh not that one. Where's my last piece that I've done? Oh, it's in the scanner. Whatever. The last thing I did was in the scanner, but I'm working on a few um Like just trying to get some of my old, trying to get my old concept 2D traditional medium skills back. So I'm just trying to like beast up on that stuff. I haven't done anything in the area in forever, but I feel like all these things sort of they work to sort of complement each other. So I'm just trying to get to the point where it's like, you know, I'm doing. If I can do good 2D work, it'll serve me when it comes time to do some 3D work because I can work faster in 2D, get a concept I like, bring it up in 3D and and help me get to the modeling stage of things. So I've been doing a lot more 2D stuff lately, just trying to build up my skill set in the way that because I mean, God, I, I see stuff like this and just it just blows my mind like, you know, amazing environment concept right next to amazing character concepts. You know, if I could, you know, I, I don't expect I'll get to the point where I'm as, as talented as this guy because when you're just concepting every day, you just get to a point where you're so practiced and create such great stuff. But still, if I can get, you know, 40% of the way there, it'll help me a great deal in my 3D work. So, like, my 2D work will get more broad and open. And I'll be able to be a little bit more creative and flex a few more muscles. Um, so, I love, I love following. Geez, look at how much good stuff. There's so much good work on here. See, that's why I've got a hundred notifications on my art station, even though I just cleared those out yesterday. <laughs> it's like anytime I see artwork that I, that inspires me, I try to just uh, digest as much as possible. But it's also it's a blessing and a curse because a lot of times I'm spending all my time looking at art and I'm not creating as much as I need to be creating. Cause you gotta do both. You gotta find your sources of inspiration, but also you gotta put it into practice. So I've actually got a, I've got a little to-do list right here where every day. I do one full sheet of figures, meaning just like figure studies, and just try to, you know, do figure work where it's just like humans and human forms in strange positions and, and tough to draw, things that I couldn't draw out of my imagination. I do a full page of that, and then I find, you know, one sort of face. I struggle with female faces and drawing like attractive female faces, so I do one face. And I do one study of another artist where I just take a look at an artist I really admire and then do a study off of their work. And then the last thing I try to do is um, I try to do like a uh, a rendering of of a bust with like my Copic markers. I just try to get like a render where I um, actually do some 3D shading. So those are all the things I try to. Pr I don't get to do all of them every day. I've been doing mostly just the figures and then like walking away. But you know, getting to the point where I do the 2D stuff to where I can let it inform my 3D work so I can concept quickly in 2D and then say, okay, I like this concept. Let me do a, a front side and a top and and this is a concept I'm going to execute on now and then take that into model. It's going to help me model a lot faster because I'm not, I'm not doing the discovery in the 3D model. And if you guys have been watching my stream for a while, you've seen me do this where it's like, okay, I'm, I'm figuring things out as I'm going along in the 3D model. And uh, I'm not as good as that as I'd like to be. If I tried Medium, I never heard of Medium. Is that a software package? This can't be what you're talking about, right? Oh, Oculus Medium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've been following some of the people working in it. I haven't used it myself. There's a really good guy who's making Quill, I think it's called. Quill Software.
um, there's a there's an artist I'm following. It's like an animation software. This quill thing. Where is? There's some really cool stuff coming out of this. I just want to find the guy doing it. This guy is amazing. Is there a website? That'll help me. Yeah, this dude's rad. Goro Fujita. All painted in VR. There's just a lot of really cool stuff in here. Because this is like a really like I could see a game art pipeline. Not that not that you would author your assets this way, because I think it's it's prohibitively slow. But in terms of like stylized animation and look, I love like what this guy does. Like I could see a game in this exact art style. Where it's like there is no horizon, you're basically in an illustration, and the illustration comes to life as you kind of are interacting with it. Um, you will notice though that most of these animations are by one guy so <laughs> I question how accessible uh, this stuff is because there's there's like seems to be one master and a lot of people who have like one or two pieces but yeah Quill is really rad yeah there you go Goro Fujita that's the guy <sighs> yeah you gotta be careful drawing people in the real world I've never been cussed out and I've also never been caught but I am pretty when I because you know life study is a great way especially because like it helps you gesture when you're when you're when you're doing a study from life um, you know obviously like you'd want someone's sign off before you start doing such a thing but um, in the instance where you're just like oh I'm on the bus or I'm on you know I'm in a cafe I'm just drawing people around me I could see people not being wild about that and uh, but like you know it, it, it makes you work fast it makes you work quickly so you get to the thing where it's like oh yeah like uh, I'm doing more gestural you know forms because I don't want to get caught and I only have so much time before they move but I, it's, a, it's a great way to practice actually I used to do that I used to draw people a lot and it helped me um, you know just draw, doing studies honestly it's like the main thing I'm doing, that, that, that guile thing I just showed you guys is like the first thing that I'm doing. I'm like, okay, I'm actually going to try and finish this illustration. Um, but in the past, usually, I just like, as I've been kind of trying to ramp up my skills a little bit, I've been doing a lot more just like um, drills and practice than I have been actual illustration. And it's, it's, it's helping me to, it's helping me to, you know, get some of my mojo back. You know, when I, when I, when I previously all I used to do would draw and then like, I would draw things I was comfortable with. And now it's like, I'm basically just like searching as much as I can for things that I'm not comfortable with and just finding things that I'm not good at and then working on those things. And it's helping me to um, get better faster. And I'm not producing anything, you know, that I'd want to, you know, see again or hang up. But it doesn't really matter because really what I'm trying to do is just get my skills to the point where I can make stuff that's like, going to serve me as a, as a games artist and that's all I'm really trying to do is just like you know if I get better at drawing architecture then I can do a lot more for concepting levels and environment art than I currently can do right now when I do most of my level my level art concepts I'm just like taking a swing at it in 3D blocking out some meshes um, doing all that stuff by just doing you know block meshes in, in 3D space and you know, it, it it works for the most part, but it's also a lot more slow and cumbersome than just, say, doing a quick sketch in perspective and saying, like, okay, like, this makes sense for where those walls are going to be, where's the top of the building going to be, where's the horizon line. If I just had more of those tools in my tool belt, then I could work faster across the board. And, like, most of the work I'm doing now is just trying to get better at stuff like that. Um, and it's been helping a lot. Like if I if I stay pretty militant about just the studying, it helps a lot. And I want to I want to start doing the same thing in 3D. I want to start doing 3D, approaching it in a way where it's like, just knock out sculpts every day. Um, you know, just do do more studies than I'm doing. You know, trying to finish pieces. Um, you know, it helps with inspiration too. You know, like I I find that I, I there's an artist I really admire, and I start trying to like mimic their style and see the kind of stuff they do and then I get really inspired to just kind of like put a little slant on it and and just build up 
more of what I want to be doing. Like, are all these assets built in VR? See, I love, again, like, I love stylized stuff. I think if you can make it, you know, not look and feel cheap, actually looks directed, it, I think it's such a cool... Like, that abstraction is what I think... Handling abstraction well is a very, very um, double-edged sword, and doing it well is such an um, achievement, I think. Creating VR, wow, that's amazing. That's cool. Yeah, I love that stuff. I think it's such a rad. I love stylized stuff like this. Because then, you know, you're making palette choices. You're doing, like, your where you choose to bend the rules and stuff. It's just such a... What uh? What is he like? What does he model with? Like, what does he do three D modeling with in VR? I'm not really familiar with what packages are out there. Purple. So one thing I like to do, especially because this, if you, if you look at the reference, um, this is like a perfect candidate for mask by cavity. You'll notice that like he's pretty much always got darkness and all the grooves and folds everywhere on his on him. So um, if you go to masking and do mask by cavity, it'll fill all those grooves. Turn down the blur. So I just, yeah, I did basically a nice harsh fill, and I can just find areas where I want to paint it back. And then I'll break up the symmetry that way as well. The one thing about it that, that I am curious about, Pro, is that with the sculpting in VR, and again, I've not tried it, so I'm not knocking it because I want to try it first. And I've got my my Vive and my Oculus here. I just haven't 
had a setup where I can do kind of sculpting in a, in a reasonable way. Um, it's just that uh, I, I I can't imagine the one thing is like the haptic, like the tactile feedback. Like it's the one thing where it's like I I can't imagine not having that. Like so when it comes to creating art in like I'm never gonna want to do something that's harder to do and more laborious. I'm never gonna want. I'm never gonna like, you know, for the sake of you know, if, if there's if there's a if there's I'm sure there's pluses and minuses, right? Um, if the if the workflow minuses outweigh the pluses, I just I can't imagine ever adopting it. Um, and for all the people making great stuff in there, it's like it just seems as though. It's really difficult, and maybe you know. That being said, you know, it's like it's like, you know, oh look at this guy, he makes really really good sand art, and it's like wow, that's a really fucking or, excuse my language, that's a really sick image. Like look how cool that is, blah blah, blah right? Um, could I make something better, or is it is it gonna replace my traditional workflows? You know, yes or no. And again, that's that's a, that's a completely naive and closed-minded way to look at these things. Um, it's just whenever I see the 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 medium stuff, I just see like for all the good stuff I see. It, you know, a big part of me wonders, like, is it, is it so difficult? You know, I, I just feel like it's so difficult. And again, like, I want to try it first before I knock it. I'm not saying I'm against it. I want to try it first. But it does seem like in, in really, really hard. Yeah, I could see that 3D Hermit, though. I could see it being such a... I, the thing that I, I think that you're right, like, I think it's really going to add... I think it's really natural, right? I think it, it adds a lot of uh, natural feel to it because you can just look behind it, spin it around, and you, you kind of you get that sort of in 3D space, what's it doing, and that's that's a big part of... I, I, even, I miss that in ZBrush a lot where it's like I'm not... You know, I forget to take it out of perspective mode, and I'm, I'm not quite sure what artifacts I'm seeing based on the fact you're still rendering a 2D version of, of the thing. It's almost three o'clock here, so I'll be winding down. Really enjoyed chatting with you guys today. We covered a lot of cool stuff. Thanks for sharing your work, guys. If those of you who shared your portfolios, it was fun to check out your guys' work. Pretty happy with where this guy's going. I think I can do the high resolution detail, um, add some more warts and stuff, and break up the symmetry a little bit. But I think it's getting pretty close there to where all of a sudden 
He's looking like where I want him to look. Back off some of these shadows a little bit. Normally I wouldn't paint shadows the way I am right now, but like he's got kind of from the source art, he's got like some you know, there's something to the grooves there. He ha he does have some um paint like they they in the source material they like paint in some of that stuff but yeah we're getting there we're not there yet but we're getting there I think when I come in next week and I do um, yeah the final high resolution detail I think it'll end up being a pretty cool little sculpt I think it'll make a nice addition to my non-existent portfolio <laughs> and bulbous. It's fast and voxel based, you don't have to worry about topo and stuff like that. Yeah, I like that part of it too. Like voxel based is, is rad. Yeah and Thomas like I, I what um are you talking about the, the Octus medium stuff in terms of three D printing? Um, and yeah, like I'm kind of the same way. Like I get really kind of anal about topology and geo and stuff like that. To my to my detriment, I think I'm, I'm, I I get like unnecessarily hung up on stuff because of that. And you know, it, it's because I'm my ultimate goal for the whatever mesh I'm working on is to enter the game engine. I'm sure your ultimate goal being a uh, 3D print also kind of can cause a lot of the same problems I would imagine. Alright, so we'll get a nice render of that one. Let's do... Let's do one here. Save. One sideways. Save. big one. And I'll do a render of this one. I lose my render? I lose the other guys? If I do a render? I didn't realize that. Let's try this again. Right here, Boop. Mad Magnus. Yeah, this was the this was like the go-to Mad Ball in my mind. Hornhead, he is called. I wish I could grab a a ZBrush render, but I guess once you grab the uh, once you do like the BPR render, I guess it gets rid of those. But anyway. Good talking to you guys. Thanks for stopping by. Um, Thirty Herman no Limits, awesome. Good talking. Hey, thanks for stopping by, Thomas. I really love, uh, really love your works. So I appreciate you coming and uh, joining the stream here. Um, Facebook folks, see you guys later. Um, and yeah, I'm every, I'm every Thursday, 12 to 3 p.m. PST. So thanks for hanging out today. It was fun. Thanks for going down the rabbit hole with all of the. Uh, thanks for going down the rabbit hole with all the uh, 80s cartoon stuff. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Alright guys, I'll uh I'll see you all next week.